This is Chunk Yanil. I spent 1,000 hours completing every possible task in Yanil, but now I'm exploring the world one chunk at a time. Over the past year, new chunks have brought new challenges, and I even thought it was game over when I got locked to a death chunk. But even that couldn't hold me down. Now I'm free to unlock new chunks and explore the world again, so let's see where this one chunk journey takes us. It feels good to be free. Hello and welcome to the only fishing XP drop world record holding one chunk man who is no longer locked to the death chunk of Port Cazard. It feels so good to have taken down this terrifying chunk and gotten some insane levels. 81 fishing and 91 cooking all being locked to this area. But with all the chunk tasks complete, you know what that means. I get to roll a chunk. This is literally the most fun thing I get to do as a one chunk man. Well, outside of bringing the game and getting world record and making Jack exchange rooms, but outside of that, the most fun thing. When you've been stuck in one place for so long, the suspense of not knowing where you're going next is unlike anything else. It has been a while since my last chunk roll, so let me quickly catch you up on where things are at. This is the current chunk map. Since we defeated the dreaded death chunk of Port Cazard, I need to start looking at what might be my next biggest challenge, and I don't have to look too far. The way I see it, I can roll in three directions. North, south, and away? We'll come back to what that actually means. Of these three directions, north is absolutely the worst. The more chunks I roll north, the closer I get to my next real death chunk, East Ardoyne. This place has a level 90 agility requirement. 90 agility is a skill nobody wants to get, but imagine doing it without even a single rooftop course to train on. For that reason, any roll north is a scary roll. On the other hand, rolling south really is not too bad. There is one problematic chunk down here, being the chompy bird hunting chunk, which would be a lot of work. 4,000 chompy kills, making all the arrows by hand. But other than that, south is pretty exciting. And then there's... Away. away. If you haven't followed from the beginning of the series, you may be wondering why these chunks way out here are able to be rolled. This is a special rule for my account to use Yanil's most underappreciated transportation features. The portals on the third floor of the Wizards Guild. Or is it the Magic Guild? These three portals connect to three other magical towers. The Wizards Tower, the Dark Wizards Tower, and the Sorcerer's Tower. So I can roll their respective chunks. Each of them represent a potentially very challenging grind. Magic trees, forestry, or even the Taverly Dungeon. At the same time, dropping into a chunk so far away from my main area could open up a lot of options. These are high challenge, high reward rolls that could do a ton for the account. Let's jump into the chunk roll, which I streamed to my Discord members as a thank you for helping me take down the fishing trawler chunk. <laughs> oh man. All right, it's time. You guys ready? Let's do this. Yep. Do it. Go. Oh, ready? Here we go. Rolling the chunk. Pick chunk. Let's do this. Come on. Something good. Something good. All right. <laughs> oh man, we're going south. Okay. That is fine right now. I don't think there are any chunk tasks here. Let's definitely go and explore. All right, here we are at the chunk border. It's time to unlock the chunk. Chunk unlocked. <laughs> there are a couple new things here. There's this weird pile of rock. Yo, what is this cabbage doing here? Just chilling out in the middle of the field. Yeah, there's a lot of weird food spawns because of the ogre quest. Oh, hey, you're right. There's an onion and a tomato just on a stool. Actually, these are the ingredients for a garden pie, which boosts farming. So that's actually a really helpful unlock. Nice. We walked around for a little while longer, but didn't find anything else of note. So it's back to the chunk picker to roll again. With this, we added three new rollable chunks, all of which are pretty interesting. Chunk 10 is the chompy bird hunting grind I mentioned before. Very long and annoying sounding. Chunk 11 is actually really cool. The felled up hunter area, which I've never really been too much. And chunk 12 is also very important for watchtower quest progression, so also very cool. Shall we roll again? Hey, yo, send the next round. Round two. Here we go, here we go. Big <laughs> chunk. Something good. What's it going to be? Oh, oh. <laughs> okay. Let's go. Not bad. More options. Wow. All right. Well, time for the hunting. We continue south. Two rolls in the same direction. It's crazy. Another new chunk unlocked. Like I said, one I have not really been to. Chunk unlocked. All right. Woo. Going south. All right. Well, I'm going to explore this area. I will catch you guys later. All right. Take care. All right. See you guys. Enjoy the hunting. Time for me to do a snappy D run. <laughs> All right. 
Here we are in some new chunks. Oh man, it is always so strange to have a new area to walk around in. If it wasn't obvious, we rolled this chunk, the felled up hunter area, which has lots of different low level animals to trap. I don't know if I've ever trained hunter here. I actually love the way this area looks. It's just so peaceful and so different. I don't know. I've, I've never really hung out here. Oh, there's a lot of birds over here. That's probably going to be pretty helpful for training. I don't know. Something about a coastal beach thing with all these weird streams and stuff. This pond. Like, I like this here. I like this area quite a lot. These houses are so strange. I mean, what what is the point of these? Why are these here? Help! Water! What the? Whoa, are you okay? Have you been stranded at sea for months? No, that's my house right there. I'm just really thirsty. Oh, but you look terrible. How did you get like this? I don't know. Probably my diet. I only eat fried birds and cabot tenders for every meal. It's not exactly nutritious. Oh yeah, I used to be like you, eating only junk food and feeling terrible all the time. That was before I started taking AG1, who happens to be the sponsor of today's video. Did that just descend from the sky? AG1 is a foundational nutrition supplement that supports whole body health. Every serving contains 75 vitamins, minerals, and whole food source ingredients, and it's so simple to use. I don't get it. Literally, just a scoop of this powder and 8 ounces of water in the morning makes me feel way more confident that I'm getting the daily nutrients I need. It's become my favorite way to start the day. It's easily one of the best things you can do for your health in just 60 seconds. That's good because I have a very busy schedule as you can see. So, how do I know this stuff is legit? The AG1 team is constantly testing their product. Its formula is backed by multiple research studies. And not only that, it's also NSF certified for sport, which means it has to meet the highest quality standards out there. There's about a million reasons to take AG1, but personally, I can feel a boost in energy and I notice myself needing less coffee with it. So do yourself a favor and go to my link in the description or scan the QR code to get a free one year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. What's a link? Thanks again to AG1 for sponsoring today's video. So as far as Hunter goes, we've got these birds, these kebets, and looks like we have two spined larupias. Find Larupia? Yeah, okay. That reminds me, we haven't actually talked about what the chunk tasks are here. There's really only one, but it's a big one. Level 71 Hunter to catch an imp. Yeah, these little red guys, you can actually catch them if you have 71 Hunter. There's also a diary task to catch a Spined Larupia, but I figure we'll do that naturally as we level. I've never trained Hunter on this account, so I'm excited to explore all the different possible ways to gain XP. And I'll need about 850,000 of it to finish the chunk. Oh, there's also a butterfly. Oh, that's pretty exciting. That, that thing's gonna drag me out of my chunk like 10 times, I'm sure of it. But as far as what's in this chunk, I think we've basically seen it all at this point. This does mean something pretty exciting. We're going to get to use something that I've had access to for a very long time and have never actually had any reason to use, so let's go use it. One of the first things I did when I came to Yanil was complete an easy diary task to just browse this hunter store. But the whole time I've been here, I haven't had any reason to actually buy anything from here until now. Look at all this stuff. Oh, yes. Oh, it's so cool. This is here. This is such an iconic staple of this town. And I finally get to use it. So that's really exciting. We'll need a butterfly net, maybe a couple of butterfly jars eventually. Definitely some bird snares. I think I'll probably buy five. I'm not sure. Teasing stick. I can't use this just yet. There's also this magic box. These are so expensive, 720 coins each. These are used to catch the imps that create the chunk task for this chunk. Um, but for now, I think this is what I'll start with. I'm not sure if I need more than one of these. I don't know. We'll have to come back. All right, here we are. Let's get started with some hunter. Let's do this. I don't really remember the last time I did low level hunter in general. So let's just give this a shot, I guess. I think we can set up some bird snares. Oh man, this is so cool that we can do this. First bird caught. Oh yeah, very nice. And we do get some feathers here, which could very likely be useful for fletching in the future. And the first hunter level of the grind, 27 hunter. Whoa, whoa, whoa. 27? Hold on, we have to rewind for a second. I have to admit something. I almost made a huge mistake. You see, my hunter level is 26. Not 27. That would be a big issue. No, it's 26. And over the last few months, I've been slowly using XP lamps to reach this level in the background. Now, why is this such a big deal? I think I need to provide you with a little context first. 
you're not as familiar with one chunk as a genre, you might not know that Hunter as a skill usually represents a notorious grind and brings along a massive change to a one chunk account. Implings. Using the Hunter skill, players can catch Implings and receive what often feels like a totally random item. Not to be confused with the much less impactful Imps, Implings can be found flying all over the world and especially in their own minigame, the wheat maze known as Puro Puro. But why are Implings such a big deal? Two words. Resource scarcity. In the world of a one chunk man, access to basic resources is anything but a given. For example, I'm over a year and a half into this account and I've never wielded a bow, ever. Because of my chunks, I just don't have access to certain resources or gear. But implings change all of that. There are 11 types of implings, each with a unique table of loot, introducing hundreds of new items to the account. And catching them in Puro Puro, which I can get to through a randomly appearing portal in Yanil's wheat field, would be an amazingly consistent way of gathering tons of resources, vastly superior to anything I've had so far. Not only that, but I can upgrade literally every single gear slot with rune armor, dragon hide, amulets of glory, onyx bolts, dragon arrows, literally any bow, but I won't. All that power? I don't want it. Well, not yet at least. To me, upgrading my account so massively through Implings wouldn't feel earned. It wouldn't be in the spirit of the account to have worked this hard unlocking all of these areas just to replace all of my gear in a totally unrelated minigame. My take on One Chunk has always been a little bit different, and it really all comes down to the core belief that drives this account, that everything should be chunk specific. I want my progress to reflect my journey. If I have a bow, I want it to be because I crafted it from the resources in my chunks, not because I looted it from an Impling just like every single other one chunk man has. And I almost didn't realize this. This is where I almost made my huge mistake. You see, level 27 is the level required to catch the lowest level implings outside of Piro Piro. I've known that the mini game doesn't fit with my chunk specific rules for a long time, but I almost went ahead and started catching implings anyways, blissfully unaware that I was undermining the core value of what makes this account special to me. Thankfully, I realized just in time and stopped at level 26. But this decision does come at a huge cost. I'm sacrificing access to items that I most likely won't find in the next 5, 10, 50 chunks. To this day, I have never caught one impling, and I never will unless I find my way to them through a chunk specific process. So if you want impling content, go watch Limpwort, Verf, Happery, Frey, Mikaru. The list goes on. But if you want to see what a one chunk man can do without implings, well, that's a journey I can take you on. Anyway, that is 27 Hunter, but that level means nothing to us now, now that we're not doing implings, so uh, I think we're in for a little bit of a leveling montage. 28 Hunter, 29 Hunter, level 30 Hunter. Coming up on some unlocks in the next couple levels here, as this is a relatively low level Hunter training area. I think most of my unlocks are in the 30s. 31 Hunter, this should be a big level. Yes, we can now trap spined Larupias. Larupias are pitfall trap animals, so we're gonna need to go figure out how to do a pitfall trap. Okay, I'm over here and I'll be totally honest, I'm not entirely sure how this works. My understanding is you chop down a tree. I did bring my axe and a knife. I think those are what you use. Okay, now we have the spiked pit. So what? Now we tease one of these guys. This guy's attacking me. Now we jump over. Is this how this works? Jump and he go. He he got me. What? <laughs> Am I doing this wrong? What the? How do? Uh, this this is going <laughs> terribly. Okay, take two. Go in the thing. Dude, am I- do I just suck? What is happening? I think they all just walked out of my chunk. I have no idea how to do this better. Oh, 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 <laughs> idiot, got him. Very nice. Oh, big bones, raw meat. Well, that is a chunk task complete. Okay, well, uh, I guess that's what we're doing now? 32 hunter off of these spined dudes. I gotta say this is, um, I wouldn't call it efficient, but it is pretty entertaining, but it takes forever for them to actually walk in the trap. They jump over every time. These things are like so genius, the big brain, weird dog things. I know what I'm up to. And there is 33 hunter. This should be a very important level. We can trap barb tailed kebits. Um, I just did these spined larupias for these last two levels and I can say it was uh, interesting, but I don't know if interesting is uh, what I want from this. Uh, let's trap these kebits. So for this, my understanding is that I literally do basically the same thing. Just uh, put a stick under a rock and wait, I guess.
Hey, look, it worked. And what do we get? 168 XP. Whoa, that's kind of good. Okay, let's let's do a little bit of this. They also dropped this weird barb tail harpoon, which unfortunately isn't very useful, but apparently it can be used as a harpoon in the future, which maybe could be interesting. Well, I've just learned something. You can only set up one deadfall trap at a time. I guess that's why nobody uses these. <laughs> Starting to wonder if there's a way that maybe we could do both deadfall and bird traps at the same time. Thank you for going with me on this hunter journey. I feel like such a noob here, but uh, I don't know. I like learning things at the same time, so it is kind of fun. Hey, yeah, this might actually work. I don't know. This is kind of nice. Bird trap and a deadfall at the same time. I'm kind of feeling it. Look at me, I'm like a real hunter. All right, this is actually getting kind of fun. 35 hunter. There's still one more interesting and notable unlock along the way to our journey. By the way, some guy on Twitter, I think his name is Settled. Anyway, he says he thinks I can get to the YouTube high scores by 2026. So I've got a new goal, 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year. That seems like a good milestone on the way to the YouTube leaderboards. Help me hit that goal and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks. So just to give you a little perspective, I have secluded myself to this little corner of my chunk all the way down here. This is my spot for my deadfall trap and my birds kind of overlapping the two, I don't know, ecosystems. And this seems to be working very well. The XP per hour is feeling good and it's not too much work. I'm not chasing those stupid things around the pits anymore. While I grind away some levels in the background, how about some fun felt it facts? Let's start with the name. Apparently, Feldup Hills is a reference to a real place, the Mendip Hills in the UK, which actually looks really nice. Nothing like their swampy, ogre-infested RuneScape counterparts. The first thing I encountered when rolling south was this little outcropping of rocks, aptly named Pile of Rock. Mining it gives a whopping one mining XP and a rock. I swear I'm not making this up. Nothing screams, does Jagex remember I still exist, like this old rock texture, which was all but wiped from the game in a 2016 update. The rocks are mainly used in a few quests, and I've looked into just about every way that could possibly be useful to me, but sometimes a rock is just a rock. One thing I thought might be possible here is grabbing the infamous singular death rune spawn, but it turns out it's not in the chunk I unlocked, it's in the western one. Though, this apparently got changed from RuneScape Classic, as you can see from this hilarious map I found on the Classic Wiki. I love Here Be Wolves. <laughs> it feels like reading a real medieval map. But you'll notice that Death Rune spawn got moved, and there was once a mine here, which got removed at some point as well. One more fun fact, and this one is a bit of a follow-up on one of my old fun facts. A while back, I mentioned the Scavid Cave system that's found all over the Feldup Hills. I also showed this map of the Scavid Cave area, but what I didn't mention is that, you see this giant area that takes up over half the map? It's actually completely inaccessible. What's even stranger here is the fact that there's a rope seemingly leading out of there that has a climb option, and there's also these searchable rocks all over the place. Why does this exist? Well, I did some digging and it turns out that in RuneScape Classic, the game would send you here if you entered a cave but didn't have a light source. With darker terrain, it would simulate not having any light, and you'd have to search a rock to get out. Since light levels were introduced in RuneScape 2, they just made the individual caves dark if you entered without a light source. Still, it makes you wonder what could be in there if you somehow found a way in. That's a clip with 36 Hunter in it, in the clip, the clip has 36 Hunter inside the clip, there it is in the clip, 37 Hunter, 38 Hunter, and a 1175 total level, it's a random one, but I do think I'll be getting quite a few total levels through this grind as I'm leveling up a lot of different skills, 39 and just one more level for a nice upgrade, there it is, level 40 Hunter, this is a really big milestone, we can set up three traps at once that should actually speed things up by kind of a ton this is really cool i'm actually enjoying doing multiple hunter methods at once i kind of feel like this was the vision for this skill and that that brings me some joy 44 one more level for another minor unlock and there it is the last meaningful level for the next little while 45 hunter we can catch black warlocks those are butterflies that fly around here i tagged one i don't know if we can see it from here there it is there we go see he's marked in red all right i'm back with my butterfly net um i don't know if i trust this thing not to drag me out of my chunk okay, this looks pretty safe let's try this one. Oh. Hey, there we go. Black Warlock. Very, very cool. Oh, they respawn very quickly. Whoa, that's a fast respawn. What? No, no, no. Oof. 
Okay, maybe <laughs> Oh, to be a chunk man trying to catch a butterfly. I think I might just try to catch them as they fly by and not try to spawn camp them just because I know that's going to end poorly. What I will say is that these are a very cool item. Uh, releasing them is like a little strength potion. Very, very similar to a super strength. And now I have repeatable access to that. So that's actually really, really cool. Before I jump back into grinding hunter, I do have these two lamps in my inventory. I've been hanging on to these since my most recent, well, lamping blunder, I suppose. And I can't decide what to put them into. There's not a lot of good options here, I guess, to quickly talk through them. There's Slayer. This is the last skill that's level one that I can put lamps on. Can't put lamps on Runecraft or Blur or Construction at this point, but the actual utility of Slayer seems pretty limited at this point. On the other hand, another couple of options would be, well, Crafting, which is my hardest skill to train right now, although it is technically trainable on the Trawler. Or I guess Farming is also a very difficult skill for me to train right now. All things considered, I don't stand to gain that much much from crafting or farming, and because Slayer is the only skill I can't train at all, I think it's really the only way to go at this point. So let's do it. First lamps on Slayer, here we go. All right, back to it. And now that we're done with the major unlocks, I promise I will stop showing you every level. <laughs> there aren't a ton of important milestones between now and the goal, so uh, yeah, I'll just get to grinding. Okay, I lied. That is the last important milestone for a while. 47 Hunter is the level at which I will no longer fail to catch these Crimson Swifts. The consistency of XP will just be the best it can be from here on out. Okay, I'm sorry, but this is what the barbed tail harpoon looks like on the ground. That thing is absolutely freaking massive. Where are the kebbets keeping all that length? I mean, uh, it really raises some questions. What the? I <laughs> Just noticed this guy's been standing here um, and he's standing on top of his bird snare. Oh, he moved. Good luck, brother. And another small milestone, 55 Hunter. What it doesn't show on the level up screen here is that I can now bare hand catch these butterflies over here now. Spawn camping this one butterfly right here might actually be a pretty decent method. Definitely gonna have to try this. Maybe I'll stand on this side. This feels a little bit safer. Oh, oh, wait, can't go over there. Oh, I think we're good. I think we're good. Oh, man, this is, of course, right by the chunk border. It's just the joys of being a chunk, man. While I work on this, I kind of want to do a little retrospective on the whole fishing trawler adventure from last episode now that it's all over. It really feels amazing to be a world record holder and to think I did it on a one chunk man. It is too bad that mega scaled fishing trawler had to be removed, but I do understand. If it fell into the hands of large scale botting operations, it would have been very bad for the game. Sorry if you were planning on torturing 20 of your friends to get 250k XP per hour here, but to make it up to you guys, I've now decided that it's my life mission to get fishing trawler updated. You may have seen the proposal I posted on Reddit after the video dropped. I mean, some of you definitely did. This outlines some changes I think could vastly improve the minigame. I know that not everything is as simple as making a few quick changes, but can we at least rotate the Kraken tentacle to face the boat? Anyway, if you want to help my crusade to get Trawler improved, make your voice heard when Jagex asks for what changes you want to see. Everybody needs to get their angler outfit at some point, so why not make it a little bit better for everybody? Oh, and one last thing. I did get official confirmation through an anonymous source of the exact reason why the game crashed when looting the net. This sounds ridiculous, but I promise it's true. The game thought I was doing an infinite loop. Apparently, each fish is individually processed through a couple of lines of code, and when looting over 1,000 fish at once, that generated enough lines of code that the game's internal failsafe for infinite loops kicked in. Now, knowing that we were hovering just under that threshold makes the whole thing even that much more insane. Like, if we'd brought even another 10 or so people, we would have likely crashed while looting the net every time, and I'm guessing that we wouldn't have been able to figure out why, and would have just given up. The circumstances to make that work had to be even that much more specific in a way that I didn't even realize. That also means that around 70k is probably the actual mathematical peak. So it's nice to know that it would never have gotten that far out of hand. So based on the numbers I'm seeing after a little bit of testing of this, and it seems to be a tiny bit faster XP per hour, but it's a lot more attention paid and a lot more dangerous. I would also kind of miss all the other XP I'd be getting, all of the bones that I'm burying, all of the 
logs that I'm chopping, the feathers for fletching. I might come back after a couple more levels when my chance to catch is even higher. There is one more thing I want to try now that I've gotten a few more levels. These Larupias should technically be my fastest XP per hour, but that relies on them actually getting caught. So I want to see now that I've gotten a few more levels if I can catch them more consistently. All right, that's promising. That's promising. Whoa, that looked insane. I don't know how I just did that, but that was really sick, honestly. <laughs> all right, all I'm saying is that this activity should absolutely be giving me token agility XP. I think that this is actually a complete missed opportunity. Hunter is fun because it's one of those skills that combines a lot of different activities. And I think this would be a great opportunity to incorporate another skill. I mean, you are using agility. It would just make sense. Plus, look at that. That's like, you actually need agility for this. And there is 56 Hunter. Let's take a look. This looks like it's about 30. 2k xp per hour that's actually pretty nice but it is a lot of effort i think this also might be the type of thing that's improved with another few levels wow 96 combat that is not a level i was expecting to see while doing this grind but that comes from level 52 prayer it's taking me this long to unlock the final usable prayer but there is smite very nice i just gotta take a second to say that I really appreciate how Hunter is designed to level up multiple skills at once. I think that's just such a cool way to do things. I mean, I'm getting Hunter XP, obviously, but also chopping down trees for logs as wood kind of XP. These feathers are fletching XP and obviously now prayer XP too. I just think that's a really cool way to design a skill. And I love how well it integrates with the rest of the game and the rest of the skills. And there is probably the last notable Hunter milestone before we're done here. 60 Hunter, we can set four traps at once that's pretty sick and that is a clean 1200 total level on that beautiful i kind of want to see what a four trap setup looks like over here i want to test some other things out before i settle into another 20 hours or so of pure larupia 6300 we can now trap carnivorous chinchampas which are actually in my chunk but unfortunately they're locked behind a quest i can even get the box traps from the hunter store in you know but i can't use them until after the eagle's peak quest which is many 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 chunks away i don't think i'll ever complete that quest hello 64 hunter that is officially halfway to 71 got about 400k more xp to go probably maybe 20 hours or so invested here so far while i finish up the grind in the background how about a few fun hunter facts some of these are pure fun while a few of them are actually practical First of all, let's talk bird snares. Given that birds are only caught from level 1 to 19 hunter, few people ever actually use these, but they have some weird quirks. Did you know that if you stand on a bird snare, it will fail to catch a bird 100% of the time? This is true even if your level is high enough to never fail the catch. And here's a tip if you ever are using bird snares. Using the menu entry swapper plugin, you can swap the left click of an armed bird snare to walk here, but a successful trap will still have the same normal click options. This makes it way easier to not accidentally dismantle a trap by spam clicking or just misclicking. Here's a tip that I discovered by accident. Normally, NPCs, including hunter animals, appear as yellow dots on the minimap. However, there is an exception, butterflies. They're already hard enough to click, but they also don't appear on the minimap at all. That is, unless you use the NPC indicators plugin to tag them. Now you can see them moving around on the minimap, which is very helpful. Here's a fun fact that's actually kind of annoying. When doing pitfall traps, you have to use a teasing stick, which effectively makes the animal attack you, and you can rack up some real damage over time. You do get raw meat though, so naturally you'd think to start a fire and eat up, but you can't? At first I thought this was just because there's a lot of jungle scenery that you can't start a fire on, but it turns out that you can't light a fire just about anywhere. I figured this was a hunter area thing, but that led me down a rabbit hole of discovering that each hunter area has its own fire regulations. For example, Piscatoris has a giant two chunk area of no fires allowed, whereas the polar hunter area is all go on fires, you can make them anywhere you want. Feldup is especially weird with one and a half chunks of no fires. You can light them only east of this invisible line. This is the exact type of extremely niche info that fun facts are all about. What was that? That thing just like moonwalked into a trap I was nowhere near. <laughs> 
<laughs> that was probably the best thing I've seen here so far. Hey, 67 wood cutting. We even got a wood cutting level from this. That is so cool to see. 69. Nice. Yet another prayer level. 54. Gotten so many big bones from these things. And that's the big one. 70 hunter. One more level to go. And we can get back to rolling some chunks. And the final trap for 71 hunter a level that no one else has ever cared about ever can now trap imps <laughs> look, at, look at that image oh, that looks amazing and that's the end of the grind i never trained here i don't know how many people have but it was pretty nice cannot complain too much this probably took 30 or 40 hours but let's go uh, let's go trap an imp i'll be right back for you it's so convenient that there are so many imp spawns here. There's got to be like four or five. It's a ton. Toss all this in here and we'll just grab out the whole cash stack because these imp boxes are actually really expensive. 720 coins for one of these. Like, geez, it goes up so much. Oh my God. What the? And this is 72K? Holy crap. All right. Well, just, good thing we don't need to do too much of this. I think we are going to use the old method from episode one, the imp corner. Put down a box and... Uh, does he just go in? I assume that's how it works. I don't know. He's standing on it. Does he have to walk onto it? Hey, there we go. Imp successfully trapped. Oh my God, 450 XP. Wow, this might be a training method. I don't know, it's a very expensive training method, but it might be something I get to do. And if you don't know what this does, uh, this imp in a box will actually bank stuff for you from anywhere. This is what imps sound like. That is insane. Let's just, let's try it out. How does this work? Use bones and he puts it to the bank. Very interesting. And then, huh, yeah. So each imp will bank two items. Very cool though. Very, very cool. That's an option now. We can bank things from anywhere. And also that is a chunk task complete and the chunk itself complete. The grind is over. Hunter is a skill I never really liked that much, but I'm actually gaining an appreciation for it now. From that grind alone, we gained a whole bunch of hunter levels, three prayer levels, a woodcutting level, and a solid amount of banked fletching XP from these feathers, which we can make some arrows out of. So very, very cool. But that is the chunk complete, and that means it's time to roll another chunk. And for this roll, I want a live audience, but a bit of a different kind. So I hopped in a Discord call with a few content creator friends and streamed the chunk roll to them. Surely nothing idiotic will come of this. Hey. Hello. People actually answer, what the fuck? Why don't we call this chat more often? Because we don't want to talk to you, Teller. <laughs> fucking excuse me. If you all just got a private chat without me. Imp4882098882 is my favorite hardcore iron. Man. I just realized you had to click on the stream. <laughs> Good morning to you, Imp4882098882. <laughs> Who here hates Teller? Ex fucking excuse me, Hannibal. <laughs> I don't know what's worse. Me saying that you should be hated or no one actually responding to me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, a little bit. It's just, thank you, what I in too. You've missed the Imp4882098882 saga. Guys, what have you done in the chat? Why is everyone talking about Imp4882098882? <laughs> well, thank you all for being here. I have no idea how long this could go on for, so I say we get to it. It's chunk time. It's roll time. Which one Wait, do you was, not want? Yeah, I was going to say, what was the bad one? North is the worst direction to go because mm. 90 agility right here. Yeah. Uh, ooh, yeah. I guess the worst one to roll right now would be nine, just because that directly opens up basically my next death chunk. Mm. Your smithing is obviously locked at the moment because you have a terrible smithing method. Where is your closest, better smithing method? That's another thing about Artie is that it unlocks the furnace. Okay. But that, <laughs> it's good and bad. Yeah, it's a hell of a wall. Crafting too, right? You can do molten glass there as yeah, well. Yeah, that's true. So yeah, both of these are like, they're not like death death, but they're long. Other than that, chompy bird hunting, 5,000 chompy kills or something insane like that. Sorcerer's Tower is another long woodcutting fletching. Definitely not the longest, but it is magic logs. Chop, burn, fletch. I could wave to Hannibal and Sears Village while he tries to get a beaver for the next three years. You don't oh. actually have that many bad chunks. This is quite nice compared to Frizz. There's a couple of other random ones that don't 
matter at all. Five and six have nothing. I also did add 12 and 13 with this last chunk roll, both of which have no tasks at the moment. 11 is um, needed for Watchtower, so I would like this. It doesn't add anything, so I guess this is probably my number one chunk just because I want to complete Watchtower eventually. Right, so basically south doesn't matter. North is going to be the pain, but you're basically going to end up going north anyway, right? Because you've got so much more map north. Yeah, south. eventually I'll go up there unless I start building off one of these. Uh, sure. Should we do it? Should we uh, give it the give yeah. it a roll? Yeah, go, go, go. Oh, yeah. Let's do this. Good luck. 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 Okay, mm. I don't think that is any anything. More hunter. More hunter. That's not too bad. No chunk tasks because I did all the hunter stuff, but nice. I guess we'll go walk there. Well, this is the new chunk. Here we are. Well, yeah, there's not much to do here. You can do some bot busting. Yeah, <laughs> you guys think. DK Edris, level 37. He might be real. He's got a whole runecrafting outfit on. Say hello. Bot. I think he's real. <laughs> you found the one real person hunting chins yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, well, that's that. I don't think there's anything else here. Does that change anything on the chunk map, though? That's the question. Oh, this is a good chunk. Oh, I really want this chunk. Ogresses. Ogresses. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I just checked. You, sure need, you need to start Corsair Curse to get into yeah, the, okay. where the shamans are. Oh, you can't go in there without Corsair? Really? No, you need to start Corsair Curse. Oh, too bad. I was really hoping to get into this ogress shaman place that would have been really really cool maybe someday but yeah let's roll again any predictions one no, number eight it's number eight no, it's, number it's, it's eight. something over that one. side it's one two or eight it's chunky nil to a supreme <laughs> sound that's what we're wave getting. to hannibal <laughs> chunk two that's my guess yeah, that's what we're getting. picking another chunk something good please Oh, 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 oh let's talk a big game. Oh, that's that's fun. You and Hannibal can hold hands. <laughs> All right. Wow. The second portal chunk has been rolled. Wow. All right. That's magic trees. So 75 wood cutting, 75 fire making, and we have to fletch a magic shield. 87 fletching. Nice. Yeah. Wow. So it's going to be uh, going to be a lot of wood cutting. That wasn't fun with ends. <laughs> I'm excited to see the Josh video on how other people can pick flex for him. <laughs> now that I have a lot of wood cutting in my future, I think now is a good time to reveal something that happened in the Port Cazard chunk that I uh, never showed. Oh, Exclusive. Oh, okay. oh, oh, no. oh, no. oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> Just back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't believe it. All right, how much XP was it, Josh? I'll just roll the clip. Yeah, I wonder. I don't know the if it's... The effects with um, the amulet is actually pretty what? dope. Jonas, I just got the beaver on Chunky and Did you get the pet? Oh! <laughs> oh my god. Thank god I am recording in the background. I'm literally just wood cutting just like to do something AFK. Beaver had 57 wood cut. What? what? I think you might you might be you might be called called to the beaver. How how is what what? This is a joke. Handles <laughs> never I'm, coming I'm again. Actually, not. Now I need to figure out which one of these portals takes me to the right place. Oh, I have literally sweet. no idea. Can somebody come to the wizard skill and go in one of these two portals and tell me which one I should go through? I'll tell you what, Zir. I'll go through one portal. You go through the other one. No, no. Go through one each, right? And then each of you has to try and convince Josh that yours is the one. <laughs> <or isn't> the <laughs> one. <laughs> I would have done that anyway. <laughs> what one am I taking? You uh, can take West, yeah? Yeah, right. I'll take this one. You're going to do yeah. something <laughs> stupid. <laughs> Three, two, one, go. Uh, I'm there. Okay, it's this one. No, it's this one. Uh, I promise you, Josh, it's this one. <laughs> I am directly next to, um, what's that quest called? Scorpion Catcher. There you go. I need to look it up, so there's no way it's in. <laughs> yeah, take Telecon's one. I'm not in the right place. <laughs> <laughs> this is just such obvious bait. Like, I just, I can't even... I'm chilling with the Dark Wizards over here now. It's Telecon's one. Wait, but I've just killed the Dark... No, I'm, I'm at the Scorpion Catcher one. Wait a minute. <laughs> How do you get back to Yanil if you take the portal? I mini game telly. Oh, a fishing trawler. I promise it's Telecon's one. <laughs> Wait, Josh, this, you can base your decision on this. I can see two copper on my screen and there's two coal. You guys. <laughs> so I'm. Shit! <laughs> oh, no. Okay. My no. God. You guys are I such fuckers. All right, time to restart. <laughs> 
three just, music yeah. tracks right. as well. <laughs> oh, that's true. Gosh, yeah. I'm so sorry. I just forgot I used my mini game teleport, so I'm standing here for 12 minutes. <laughs> wow. Actually, I'm just logging out. Yeah, you guys. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Do we have to sign an NDA now? <laughs> <laughs> All right, all right. That was enough fun for now. The idiots are gone who made me do this, and it's time to actually go to the new chunk. Also, I just went and looked, and apparently it is on the wiki which portal is which, but I swear that was not there last time I checked. Okay, let's try this again. Here we are, the new chunk. Let's unlock this. Boom, baby, new chunk unlocked. Oh, let's go. Oh, man, being here is so exciting. This is genuinely one of the weirdest places in the game. I think the amount of people who actually have been here has got to be incredibly low. Let's see what there is. There's a knife on the ground. It's cool. Got a little crystal ball. A lot of levels to this tower with nothing to do. Kind of love that. And Thormac. Look at this guy. He has a quest called Scorpion Catcher, which I can't do, so that's not one of the chunk tasks. Speaking of which, let's quickly go over what the chunk tasks are here. There are two super easy tasks to get started. There's a diary task to talk to Sherlock, and another diary task to pick five flax. But for the real tasks, everything stems from the fact that the Sorcerer's Tower has magic trees, the second highest level tree in the game. So we're gonna need 75 woodcutting to chop those. That also means 75 fire making to burn the magic logs, and this is gonna be the big one. 87 fletching to fletch a magic shield, the highest level fletching task with magic logs. Now, when I said this earlier, Sorcerer's Tower is another long woodcutting, fletching, definitely not the longest, but I think I underestimated just how how long these tasks will take together. Woodcutting and fire making aren't too bad, but my ability to train fletching is lacking, to say the least. We're looking at over 300 hours combined in this chunk. This represents a very real practical issue. I have to release monthly videos, and I'm not gonna post another one without this chunk complete. I may have to get very creative on my fletching methods, or very, very sweaty over the next few weeks. Either way, this chunk is going to be a much greater challenge than I initially thought, so let's not waste any time. So one of the chunk tasks is to simply talk to Sherlock. So uh, let's do that. Sherlock, master of clues and challenges. You're not wearing a shirt? Yeah, no shirt, <laughs> Sherlock. So stupid. Well, that's a chunk task done. Another incredibly easy task is to pick some flax, I think five. There we go. Two chunk tasks completed. Very, very simple tasks, but it is nice that we have access to flax. Let's take a quick look around this chunk before we dive into the other tasks. We've got some more unicorns over here. Very cool. Some magic trees, of course, being the main source of our chunk tasks. And of course, we're one chunk away from the Sears Village chunk. Very cool if we could roll there. I'd love to get access to that area. We can also almost chop a yew tree from here, but just not quite. And yeah, I guess that's kind of it. Got a lot of levels to get in a bunch of different skills, wood cutting, fire making, fletching. So I guess I better just get to it. I know I'm just going to passively get wood cutting levels while working on these grinds, so my first goal will definitely be knocking out fire making. But of course, that puts me on the quest to find the perfect fire making location. Anyone who's ever trained fire making knows that it requires just the right conditions to do effectively. There are three key characteristics to a good fire making spot. One, there needs to be a long uninterrupted line from east to west since you always take a step west when making a fire. Two, there needs to be more than one tree at the eastern side to chop. And three, there need to be no interruptions. You'll see what I mean in a sec. I started off in my new Sorcerer's Tower chunk, but it has its own issue of not being connected to a bank. This wouldn't be a problem if not for all the bird's nests I've been collecting. Next, I tried Castle Wars, my go-to place to woodcut with the closest trees to a bank, but there's no uninterrupted line east to west, hence the two fire lines. So I've been looking for some new areas. I tried north of Yanil, but the trees are too few and far between. Same issue here north of the Khazard area. Then I thought I came up with a genius plan. There's this sliver of walkable land just south of the No Maze. There's lots of trees at either end and a clear path straight through, but the only issue is this freaking ogre placed here specifically to stop any would-be fire makers. Jagex, they thought of everything. Extremely brief, funny little fact, there are like three bricks on the ground all over here for no reason. But then, I found it. The holy grail of fire making spots. Tons of space, two oak trees, a random cabbage. What? Let me introduce you to North Feldip. 
For real though, this is probably the weirdest place to train. I can't believe I actually have a use for this area. I don't think anyone has ever done anything notable here since Old School was released. But it is a better spot where I can do a full line of fire making down here by the coast of the Feldup Hills. Check it out. Get to hang out down here by the water. Yo, hey, what's going on with this tree? <laughs> what the heck? Why is it like half on the water? <laughs> It looks so weird. Hey, hey, 70 wood cutting. Wow, I didn't realize just how close I was to this. Very nice. Some absolute beast was doing chompy bird hunting and needed help finding the onion and tomato. CM, where at? This little twig. Oh, who? L M A O T Y. Hey, 60 fire making. It's been a big day. We could light yew logs if we had those. We don't have any yew or maple trees in the entire area, unfortunately, even with the new chunk unlock. So I'm um, stuck just doing this for now. Oh yeah, 71 wood cutting. Crystal axe is in my future. And that's total level 1250. Those are some new 1250 worlds unlocked, I believe. Stats have been going up a lot this episode. 65 fire making. I've been grinding these levels out the past few days. So I was sitting there trying to think of a way to speed up fire making when I remembered that I actually have another option for doing this. There are some log spawns on the ground in the wizard's tower and I wonder if three logs per world, just light them all in world hop, is actually going to be faster XP per hour than cutting oaks. I really want to test this out. Right now it seems like about 25k XP per hour for oaks. So let's see what these logs will be like. As far as I can tell, this isn't actually faster, and I have to say that it's a lot more work, <laughs> but it was definitely worth a shot. Yeah, I think I'll uh, go back to the wood cutting. 68 fire making, over 600,000 fire making XP over the last three or so days. Been doing this basically nonstop, and we are halfway to 75. Definitely want to get this skill knocked out first before I do the majority of this grind. 73 wood cutting. I don't know how high this level is going to get by the end of this, but I'm imagining probably into the 90s. I invited some friends over to help keep me company while I do this. Josh isn't gaming burning his fans alive. Do not watch. Chunk Yandil, you're under arrest. Oh no. 69 fire making. Nice. Yes, 650 fishing XP from Evil Bob. Yes! Uh, I really need that fishing XP, you know, I, I haven't gotten very much fishing XP. And it's time to enter a new era right here at the end. With this lamp, we are level two Slayer. The Slayer era begins. I don't know what I'm going to use that for, but you know, I was thinking about it and there's no other way I can level that. So I figured this is probably the best use of it. 74 wood cutting. One more to go and we can chop magic trees. That's honestly such a cool unlock. I can't wait to chop those. And there it is is the level required for the chunk task magic logs that is so good to see 75 wood cutting can now cut magic trees dude as a kid magic trees seemed literally like the coolest possible thing i can't wait to actually go cut some of these all right here we go stepping through to chop a magic tree oh so so exciting oh man when I was a kid, these things seemed so mysterious and magical. Like, look at that. Oh, it just looks so cool. All right, let's chop this thing down and complete our first serious chunk task in this new chunk. There it is. Oh man, magic logs. Yes, dude, yes. Chunk task complete. Oh, so cool. Man, I started this episode catching level one birds, and here I am chopping what, when I was a kid, I thought was the end game of woodcutting. Oh, it's so cool. And it's really just the beginning. This episode has been a crazy ride. Expanding my area south in the Feldup Hills has been a dream of mine for a long time. I can't believe I rolled three chunks down there. It's also really exciting to be getting so many skills in the higher levels. Hunter and woodcutting this episode, fishing and cooking last episode, and soon fire making fletching will be up there too. I can really sense the account growing, and I feel like we're on the precipice of something huge. But I have to get over the mountain that is this next grind. It's not gonna be easy, that's for sure. If you want to show me some support and see where we go next, hit that subscribe button. This journey is far from over. But until next time, bye bye